Hey there, good morning. It is 7 a.m. on the 6th of May, 2021. Uh, get, let some folks start coming in and uh, we'll get we'll get rolling. So today we are in the book of Acts still. Uh, morning, Kim. We're going to be in uh, the book of Acts chapter 14. <clears throat> so welcome to the morning watch, everybody. There's my sister. Uh, hope you guys are well. Hope you rested well. I did. Slept very good. Um, busy day ahead. And uh, just just thankful. The sun's already beginning to shine out here a little bit this morning. It's cold. It's a little cool today. Um, so regardless of when you're watching, um, hope, your, hope your day's going to be a good one or was a good one. Either one. There's Virgil, my mom, Robin. All right, let's have a word of prayer together, and then we'll get started. There's Wilma, too. Good morning, Wilma. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your cross. Thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for the fact that while we were sleeping, you did not sleep. You were still on your throne doing what you do for us on our behalf. Lord, let us draw closer to you today by studying your word. Let it, let it transform us from the inside out to become more like your son. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, um, there's Rosemary. Good morning, Rosemary. All right, let's read Acts chapter 14. So what you're going to see again today in the book of Acts is the focus on this particular chapter <clears throat> continues to be Paul and Barnabas um, going out, sharing the gospel, um, being faithful to the calling that God has put on their lives. But they encounter difficulty. That really isn't a surprise to any of us. Um, the life of a believer is not empty of conflict. If we're do, especially if we're doing the things that God has called us to do, um, the the gospel is a uh, is a provoking idea. Um, it. It demands a response, you know. Um, that the the one question that Jesus asked his his disciples that I think we all have to ask ourselves continually is when Jesus says, "Well, who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus to you? Who is he? Is he someone that you understand in your head? You know." the facts and details about his life and his death and his resurrection, but yet he's not here. He, he, hasn't, he has not transformed who you are by you completely buying in to him, trusting in him, putting your faith and trust in him. So let's read, and then we'll, we'll, we'll unpack a few things together in the time that we have. There's Kim. Um... Wilma says, unspoken prayer requests and prayers for Joan. Absolutely. We'll continue to lift those up, most definitely. <clears throat> and all of us uh, will be praying for that. Pray for Wilma's sister Joan and then an unspoken prayer request. If you have any prayer requests, put those into the chat. All right, here we go. It says, the same thing happened at Iconium. What, what's he talking about, the same thing? Well, he's, he's, he's pushing us back to, to Acts 13, where he talked about the difficulty there, there were people if you remember if you remember at the end of yesterday's lesson um, a mob was being formed to do away with Paul and Barnabas okay so the same thing happened in Iconium Paul and Barnabas went to the Jewish synagogue and preached with such power that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers now remember the Holy Spirit's doing all this work Paul and Barnabas have 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 offered themselves up they're willing, they're available, and God is doing the work through the Holy Spirit. So people are coming to know Jesus, Jews and Gentiles. Verse 2, some of the Jews, however, spurned God's message and poisoned the minds of the Gentiles against Paul and Barnabas. The enemy does not want the gospel to prevail, but it will. It, 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 has, it has no choice but to prevail. Jesus himself said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But the apostles stayed there a long time, preaching boldly about the grace of the Lord. And the Lord proved their message was true by giving them power to do miraculous signs and wonders. 
but the people of the town were divided in their opinion about them. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. That's what we've been talking about. The gospel is divisive because, you know, um, every single human being is going to have to make a choice in regard to the gospel. They either accept it and make it a part of who they are or they reject it. One or the other. And so that's what you see here. Um, then a mob of, of Gentiles and Jews, along with their leaders, decided to attack and stone them. When the apostles learned of it, they fled to the region of Laconia, to the towns of Lystra and Derby and the surrounding area. And there they preached the good news. So it's interesting to see that when difficulty comes, it's driving them to other places. But when they get there, they don't hide out. They don't seclude themselves and quit preaching the gospel. The good news is still being preached. This idea of Jesus, perfect life, crucified, resurrected, uh, ascended to the right hand of the Father as our substitute. This message of good news. They don't quit. While they were in Lystra, Paul and Barnabas came upon a man with crippled feet. He'd been that way from birth, so he'd never walked. He was sitting and listening as Paul preached. Looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, Stand up! And the man jumped to his feet and started walking. Now, watch the response. Watch how the crowd responds to this healing. And there's some implications for us. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in their local dialect, their local language, These men are gods in human form. They decided that Barnabas was the great god Zeus. Zeus was the father of the Greek gods, all imaginary, okay, false gods, and that Paul was Hermes, since he was the chief speaker. Now, so God has just done something miraculous through Paul and Barnabas to heal this man who never walked in his entire life. And the people around them, rather than giving the credit to God, they're like, oh, these two men are everything. They are gods. They are amazing. Watch how Paul and Barnabas respond. And I honestly could not say that always throughout my life I would have responded the way they did. Now the temple of Zeus was located just outside of town, so the priests of the temple and the crowd brought bulls and wreaths of flowers to the town gates, and they prepared to offer sacrifices to the apostles. They're going to sacrifice animals to Paul and Barnabas. Because they think these guys must be gods. It's, it's just amazing. But, verse 14, When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard what was happening, they tore their clothing in dismay and ran out among the people, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are merely human beings, just like you. We've come to bring you the good news that you should turn from these worthless things and turn to the living God who made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. In the past, he permitted all the nations to go their own ways, but he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. For instance, he sends you rain and good crops and gives you food and joyful hearts. But even with these words, Paul and Barnabas could scarcely restrain the people from sacrificing to them. What, how, did, how did Paul and Barnabas react? They were overwhelmed with, don't do this. This is not right. How easy it is for, how easy would it be for us when we do something good in the name of the Lord? The Holy Spirit does the work. And then people look at us and say, oh, you're so good. You're so amazing. No, that's not the point. The point is, that Paul and Barnabas are saying, anything good you see me do, it is the Lord. It is not me. So notice where Paul and Barnabas' heart is. It's toward making sure that God gets the credit for this. Now, it turns very quickly. It turns very quickly in another direction, in a really bad direction. Then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowds to their side. 
This is the same people that wanted to worship Paul and Barnabas. They stoned Paul. Didn't kill him. It says, and dragged him out of town thinking he was dead. But as the believers gathered around him, he got up and went back into the town. The next day, okay, now, watch this. This is crazy. Very small little few word phrase, but it's pretty cool to consider. But as the believers gathered around him, he got back up and went back into town. Would you have gone back into town where the people were that stoned you? That's what Paul did. Paul went back into town. It says the next day he left with Barnabas for Derby. Verse 21. After preaching the good news in Derby and making many disciples, Paul and Barnabas returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch of Pisidia, where they strengthened the believers. That's a cool picture. They're encouraging the believers. They're equipping the believers because they know they're not going to be there forever. And they're giving the believers there in the local church encouragement and equipping them with the things that they need, the teaching that they need to be able to live this life of going and making disciples. They encourage them to continue in their faith, reminding them that we should suffer many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Paul and, Bar Paul and Barnabas also appointed elders in every church, <clears throat> leaders, local leaders who could lead the work. With prayer and fasting, they turned the elders over to the care of the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Then they traveled back through Pisidia to Pamphylia. They preached the word in Perga, then went down to Italia. This is Paul's first missionary journey. It's pretty cool. If you could uh, look, at, probably it could be in the back of your Bible. Um, that's where we find a lot of these things. It could be, you could Google it even, and you can see a map of Paul's three missionary journeys. He went all over the place. Um, finally, they returned by ship to Antioch of Syria, where the work had begun. The believers there had entrusted them to the grace of God to do the work they had now completed. Upon arriving in Antioch, they called the church together and reported everything that God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles too. And they stayed there with the believers for a long time. It's good. Now tomorrow is a really interesting is a really interesting chapter. Acts fifteen we're going to see we're going to see Paul and Barnabas and Peter standing before a group called the Council of Jerusalem to talk about this idea of, because these Judaizers, these were Jewish Christians who felt like if you wanted to be a Christian, you had to be a Jew, you had to, you had to be circumcised, you had to do all these things. And it's a, it's a big, it's a, it's a conference where all the leaders of the church come together to wrestle through this issue. Um, now keep in mind, James, the brother of Jesus, is the leader of the church here in Jerusalem. And he's going to, to listen, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. So tomorrow's a big chapter, too. So join us. Hope you can join us tomorrow. Robin says, please pray for my granddaughter. Absolutely. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Kim. Let's have a word of prayer together, and then we'll, we'll, be, we'll be gone. Lord, thank you for your truth. Lord, I just want to lift up Robin's granddaughter to you. We pray, Lord, that you would do exactly in that situation what needs to be done. We pray, Lord, for Wilma's sister, Joan. We pray that you would uh, continue to be with her, strengthen her, encourage her. And, Lord, I know there are unspoken requests this morning. Lord, I pray that you would do. Lord, we know that you are, just as we see here in Acts 14, you are the major player in this story. As a result of that truth, you are the major player in our lives. Through the Holy Spirit, Lord, living within us, Lord, I pray that you would give us opportunities to share the gospel, to share your good news. Lord, a lot of fire under us to be bold like Paul and Barnabas were, not being afraid, not avoiding conflict, but Lord, running into the fire. Lord, we love you, and we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, I love you all. Have a wonderful Thursday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for Acts chapter 15.